Hi, morning. It's Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Um, I'm out and about here in uh, North Sweden. Uh, I think you can see it's a pretty dull day. Uh, most of them are at this time of year, I think. Quite warm today though. Uh, it's only around zero. Uh, has been down to minus 17. Uh, and I will get back there, I'm certain, and below. Uh, so here we are, we're out in uh, Flaken. It's about a 20 minute drive from where I live. Uh, my mate Phil lives uh, just up this road here. It's the next house along. And uh, he had the opportunity uh, recently to buy this place. Now, um, it's completely ramshackle and a, as a house, completely worthless. Um, he, I think he bought it for two reasons. Uh, one is uh, it connects the land that he owns, so this is all kind of forested here, there's about an acre of trees and uh, it, it just connects up, but also because the inside of this house was, I mean, packed to the gunnels with stuff. Um, the old guy who lived here uh, died and uh, he, he was a bit of a character in the place and uh, was a, a collector and a bit of a hoarder. Uh, now plenty of people have been through this place now and bought all manner of stuff but there's still a lot of stuff in there. And it occurred to me that um, this would make a really, uh, a really interesting uh, documentary uh, of this person and the detritus of that person's life uh, and it is a, a real mess in there and there's no doubt the old guy was uh, living in some squalor it would have to be said but uh, no judgments you know that's the life he wanted to live so um, I think it's going to make an interesting document and uh, uh, and so I've come out here today to uh, add to that I've taken a couple of uh, shots uh, inside and I should say I'm going you can see I've got my big old uh, Manfrotto tripod here because uh, I'm shooting this on uh, 10 by 8 so I've done a couple inside already and there's a lot more to do and the thrust of my um, uh, sort of thesis with this document is uh, you know here's this person's life who who was a collector and he he, he didn't just collect things he collected groups of things so all over in there there's kind of little pockets of the house that contain a group of uh, things that he collected and one of the things as the stories would go is uh, if you go along this road a little ways uh, about a mile or two there's uh, a scrapyard and he would go down to the scrapyard with his uh, trolley and sort of pick over it and take stuff that he, he felt were of interest to him and then he would pull this trolley all the way back uh, and there's a hill back there and uh, his trolley was sometimes so laden with stuff the locals would have to come out and help him get the thing up the hill and then it all went in this house or into this shed here so that's the thrust of my argument and I've come out here today um, because I, I want to photograph the outside uh, and what I'm going to do I'm going to do it as uh, three images that are going to butt together to make a, a, a panorama. I'm not going to stitch them. Uh, I'm going to make them so that the images just sit side by side like a triptych. But the triptych will be uh, a panorama of this uh, image here. Now, it's a little tricky um, because of this lamppost. I don't really want that lamppost in my images. So I've set up here. And I'm going to kind of shoot from uh, the trees just here to get the shed all the way around through where right up to the edge of this lamppost, keeping the lamppost out of shot. So I'm going to do three images like that. Then I'm going to move. I'm going to go to beyond the lamppost and I'm going to do a, a triptych again from a slightly different uh, aspect. Okay, so that's what I'm about today. So I'm just going to get the uh, 8 by 10 set up. I'm going to get this uh, head leveled uh, and then once, I, once I'm set up uh, I'll come back and I'll show you the setup and then I'm going to shoot my images. Uh, I hope this is of uh, some interest and I'll say a little bit more about projects uh, when I come back to. Okay. Okay so here we are back again. Uh, I've been under the dark hood. I've set everything up. Uh, 
me just uh, talk you through the setup so far. So this is set up for the first shot, and that's of the house right up to the edge of that lamp post that I think you can see behind us. Um, I have raised the front standard, raised it quite a long way because uh, I don't want all this foreground particularly. I, I mean, I want some of it, but uh, I want the tops of the trees and the sky as well even though the sky is pretty dull, <laughs> but you, you have to use what you've got, eh? Um, it's in an upright format. Uh, I'm not terribly certain that that's quite right, but that's what I'm going to use, because that will give me a 2.4 to 1 panorama, which is a, an aspect that I really like. Now, uh, so as I say, I've raised the front standard, Now I've also put a tiny, tiny little bit of swing on the front as well just to uh, keep the uh, gable end in focus as well as those uh, trees uh, just beyond. But I am going to shoot at f22 uh, just to get the depth of field. So thing, things should be pretty sharp in there. But I did put a little bit of swing uh, on the front. And if you look at this, the trees are set further back than the gable end. So uh, I've swung the lens in that direction. So we pull the trees a little bit closer and push the gable end a little bit further from the um, uh, lens plane. Okay, so uh, all of that should make for uh, a nice sharp uh, image. I've taken uh, a light meter reading with my uh, incident meter. I have not used the spot meter uh, on this, largely because uh, I'm going to give it plenty of exposure anyway, but it's uh, a really soft diffused light, so the incident meter will be fine. And that's showing uh, I rate this film at 100 ASA. I use X-ray film, by the way, uh, blue-green. Um, so that's showing four seconds at f22. So I'm going to use f22, but I'm not going to use four seconds. I'm going to use 10, I think, uh, just because there's no bellows draw to worry about. It's uh, virtually at infinity focus uh, for this lens. This is a 210 mil Fujinon lens, uh, but I want to give it plenty of exposure. I want to get into those shadows over there. Uh, it's a very soft diffuse light, so the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the contrast range will be uh, pretty low. So I think I can, uh, I think I can get away with um, uh, more exposure. So I'm going to give it a, a, a 10 seconds, uh, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so that's the setup. I'm going to come back again um, as I show, as I just move the camera around. I'll show you some other things. Uh, but let me just say a little bit about uh, projects. Um, projects are kind of the lifeblood of uh, photography, uh, I guess. Uh, I mean, I actually spend quite a lot of time uh, just shooting images that catch my eye. But that tends very much to be um, panoramic landscapes. Um, and I do want to get into uh, documentary photography. It's a it's a genre that uh, that really uh, really interests me and appeals. Uh, and I actually have uh, a whole bunch of them uh, in mind, and they just ca they just seem to present themselves. Once you start thinking in that way, uh, they they crop up all over. And, and uh, I mean, Phil has had this house for quite some time now, well over a year, I'm sure, and. Uh, it was only when I started to think in terms of documentary uh, projects that this project uh, uh, occurred to me. Uh, I have others. Uh, you might have seen uh, on my blog uh, or uh, a previ my previous YouTube video about the uh, street portraits using the 10 by 8 up there in Sheleftio. I am going to do more of that. Uh, so that's uh, another project. I'm talking with uh, the various communes here in Vastabotten uh, about a, a documentary project I have in mind regarding the refugees. And you will know that Sweden has um, uh, a huge reputation for taking in uh, refugees and it has caused, uh, it has caused issues uh, for Sweden. Not, um, not, I think, social tension issues, but issues in terms of drains on finance. And there's, uh, you know, there, is an, there are an awful lot of refugees um, and Sweden is uh, actually a relatively small country, it's got a population of 9 million. 
uh, but it has done a lot. So that seemed like an interesting project. So they, they, they kind of they kind of come up they, once you start thinking in that way. And uh, it's pretty interesting stuff, I think. So anyway, that's what I'm about. Uh, this is the project I'm working on here. So I'm going to get on and shoot this image here and uh, reset the camera uh, and see, uh, see how that looks. Um, I'm, I'm going to, so eventually I'm going to have this whole sweep around here, I hope not quite what i really want is that the edge of one butts to the edge of another but we'll see how that works out so um that's it for now i'm going to show you the uh, next setup when i've shot these three images i'm going to move up the road just a little bit to get a different aspect and i'll show you those images as well so let's see how this works out okay so i've taken my three shots over there uh not too sure whether i like them uh I think one of the issues for me was I was too close to the bunch of trees, so the shed was a little obscured. Uh, but I've taken the three. Now I've come down the road just a little ways, so I'm just on the other side of uh, this lamppost. And the lamppost will be uh, just out of shot when I get the bunch of trees. So now I'm going to go trees, shed, trees, and then just a slightly different aspect of the house, get this, uh, get this other gable. So I'm going to shoot these three now, uh, and then I'm done for the day. So I hope this has been of uh, some interest, and uh, uh, and you've enjoyed seeing the setup. Um, I have re-leveled the head on this tripod now. I've moved it, um, but I'm a bit unhappy about the display of the legs. So I'm going to reset the tripod, then re-level the head, then take my shots. So thanks very much for watching. I will see you again sometime. Uh, bye for now.